Welcome to the Basics of Citrix. The purpose of this training is to instruct on some of the basics of using remote access successfully. Knowledge is power, and hopefully after viewing this training you will have a better understanding of Citrix and thus feel more powerful. Before walking through the process, let's talk about your access tools. First, you may be using a key fob that looks like this. The key fob has six numbers displayed. Make sure when you are looking at the fob you can read the letters RSA, otherwise you have it upside down. On the left side there are lines that tell how many more seconds the number will be displayed before displaying the next token. If there are three or less lines it is in your best interest to wait for the next token. Also if you are using a key fob be sure you know your four digit PIN code before getting started. If you are using a soft token available on your mobile device, it looks like this. Notice it displays how many seconds are left until next token. The reason it is important to wait for a new token when there is only a short time left is to avoid the frustration of denied access. An important part of successful access is internet connectivity. To connect to a router, router or wireless Wi-Fi connection, you left click on the taskbar at the bottom of your screen like this. Notice that I'm I am connected to SJ Public and when I hover on SJ Public you'll see that my signal strength is excellent and you'll see all these green bars indicating, uh, indicating an excellent uh, signal strength. I think a common misconception about this however is that um, this also is indicating the strength of my internet connectivity. This is not. It's only indicating, like I said, the Wi-Fi or wireless strength of the connectivity between my laptop and that connection. Um, for example, uh, an example of this is, for example, when you're at, at a hotel especially, the bandwidth itself can get sucked up by the number of people accessing that wireless at a given point. You may have strong connection to the Wi-Fi, but very little bandwidth available to you in internet connectivity. I'm very briefly explaining this. If you have questions or concerns or would like to have further discussion about this, please go ahead and reach out to our support team at 304-353-8111 or through an email to IT Help Desk. I'll talk uh, at the end of this presentation, I, I will uh, point out how to connect with our support team as well. Having uh, that information, let's go ahead and walk through the Citrix connection itself. I'm going to go ahead and left click on my internet connection on my taskbar and I'm going to left click in the browser at the very top of my screen and simply type in, by the way I left clicked there to highlight what information was there already uh, so that I could type over it. Citrix.steptoe johnson.com is what I'm typing in. Notice I'm not bothering with HTTP colon and uh, forward slash forward slash. Simply putting this information in will be sufficient. The other to me is just a little bit too much like work and probably to you as well. So just type in citrix.stepto-johnson.com here and hit enter on your keyboard. The first screen that you are going to see is the Zenapp Citrix login screen. Also available to you on this screen, if you are not using a firm issued laptop, for example if you're using a PC at home or maybe at a, you're at a client location or, and they're going to use a computer available to you there, you will need to download the Citrix web client. This first link is for Windows machines. The second link here are for Mac, a Mac machine, or uh, for example, for an example, an iPad. So you would need to uh, do that first before trying to log in. Let's talk about the login credentials themselves. As I indicated before, you have uh, hopefully been issued a key fob or a soft token for your access. That's one of the authentications required by Citrix. The other authentication, it's a two-step or a two-credential um, two uh, interface, 
is your username and password that you use logging into the, at the office itself. We use this two-step authentication because we're concerned about the security of our client's information. So just understand that even though it may be a, it seem like a pain in the neck to you, that it is important in the security of our client's information. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in my username, my password, and also my passcode that's available to me on my um, soft as a soft token on my mobile device. And you can hit enter here on your keyboard or left click on log on, whichever you prefer. And the first page that we're going to get to is the applications launch page. All of these applications are available to you for launching. Understand that this first page has a 40 minute timeout. So I wanted to talk to you today about timeouts. This 40 minute timeout may seem like a, a, a very short length of time. But if you, if you have the perspective of, for example, when you are logging on to your banking interface, or if you were even uh, simply placing an order in, on Amazon, your those pages time out typically within five minutes. So this 40 minute uh, time out of this applications page is pretty uh, generous when you uh, look at it in those terms. Now having said that, that is not the time out for the applications themselves once you launch them. Let me walk through that with you. For example, I, I figure today uh, when I'm working via Citrix, I'm going to be wanting to uh, look at email. And maybe I'm going to be working within uh, Word documents. So I'll go ahead and launch Word as well. And so what's happening right now is the same thing that happens, by the way, when you're logging into the office. Desktop authority is running. All those different things are running just like uh, when you're logging into the office interface. But understand that as long as you do something in these applications in within two hours, these applications will stay available to you. And um, as long as you don't, of course, uh, have an electrical outage or something happen with your internet connectivity. Now I'm going to suggest to you, and, and, and I would strongly suggest this to you, that you go ahead and come back to this applications page once you launch whatever it is, whatever applications you're going to be using during this session, come back and X out of this page. Now the reason that I'm stressing this is because even though you know that it doesn't matter that that page is going to time out, when I'm faced with this screen that says, due to an activity you have been logged off from the website, log on a, again to access other re, your other resources, you have been logged off, that still sets panic into me. So instead of being faced with this, what I do when I'm uh, accessing is going ahead and getting into this applications page, like I said, um, launching the applications that I'm going to be using and then I X out of this page so that I'm not faced with that screen that causes uh, trembling in my being. Having said that, um, let me talk to you about a, a couple of different things that can happen during your experience in Citrix. First of all, let's talk about the timeout uh, or more importantly, I guess, Let's talk about if I lose electric um, electric uh, access or uh, internet access. If something happens and uh, I lose connectivity, within three minutes, Citrix will try to reconnect. So you'll get a reconnect pop-up if you get electric back or if you get internet connectivity back within three minutes, you'll get a pop-up that will ask you uh, if you want to reconnect and you can reconnect at that point. If it's a longer outage, but still within 15 minutes, when you go back to inter the internet and log back into Citrix, when you launch, for example, Word, you should be put right back into that prior session. In other words, you would be right back into the same document and be able to continue working. Having said that, let's say that when I was 
launching Citrix initially that I did not launch Word. But when I'm in Outlook, I get an email from someone, and that email has an attachment, even a DRF attachment, in other words, a reference to document management that links into document management. I can double left click on this attachment and open. And what will happen is that document will open, it will launch Word, um, and go ahead and get me, gain me access into that document itself. By the way, this document happens to be a read-only, so I say, yes, I would like to be in read-only mode. And I come into this document, even not having launched Word initially. So even though you didn't launch the application, you can come into, uh, into an application by opening an attachment out of Outlook. The other thing that I love about Citrix is once I'm in Word, then I can go to Quick Retrieve and access an, an Excel document, for example. So even though you did not launch those applications initially, if you have an attachment on, to, uh, on an email, you can go ahead and launch those applications that way. The other thing that I'd like to point out to you is when you're working in Word or in Excel or in PowerPoint, whatever application, please do not use this X in order to close this document. This X closes the application itself. So instead, go to the Office button and close the document this way. Also, because things happen beyond our control, uh, sometimes what you'll experience is a checked out document when you come back into the office after working via Citrix. If you have a, a go to get into a document and the access is denied and it shows that you are in the document, unfortunately the only resolution to that, that situation is that you reach out to our help desk, our support team. And as you know, that's very easy to do. Go ahead and reach out to the support team. We can get that document checked back in for you. Just like when you're working in the office, save your documents often. That way if you do have a power, a power outage or an internet connectivity issue, those, that document that you're, that you're working with, uh, those changes will be saved. Um, not every, every sentence saving, of course, but uh, definitely every paragraph that you write or something like that you should go ahead and save. So the other thing that can happen, by the way, is Citrix can freeze for whatever reason. If, if that freeze happens, like I've indicated earlier, Citrix will, will attempt to reconnect uh, within three minutes. But even if connectivity would shut down altogether, like I have indicated earlier, when you get back into the Citrix interface, you go ahead and log in again. When you get back into, for example, Word, uh, it should go ahead and relaunch that prior session as long as you have done that reconnection within 15 minutes. When you are done with your, uh, with your session, uh, go ahead and close out of your applications. I am anticipating that you have already closed out of that initial page, disconnected from that initial page, but go ahead and um, X out, as I am doing, of your your um, actual remote access applications um, so that our, our, our stuff, our documents, and, and so on and so forth remain secure. Now I had indicated to you earlier about, and I probably overly emphasized during this session, um, accessing uh, or reaching out to support. Please understand that no matter where you are accessing our our system remotely, that you are not an island unto yourself, reach out to our help desk either via phone 304-353-8111 or email the IT help desk at ithelp.desk at stepto-johnson.com. I hope that this has been an informative session for you. Please reach out to the help desk if you need further information. Have a great experience in Citrix. Thank you.